fabulous late. Video check, audio check, and go. Thank you, Wendy, for the introduction. Today we're going to discuss seven secret tips in working with browser dev tools. And first of all, thank you for falling for that clickbait title. My colleagues from marketing recommended that do something clickbait and you will get the whole all full. <laughs> and it all worked out. I'm Mike. I'm 30 years old. I'm from the Netherlands, Nijmegen to be exactly. Uh, I work for Savvy WordPress Hosting. It's a managed WordPress host. All, uh, and we have clients all over Europe. Uh, in my day job, I'm an account manager and I visit clients and we discuss all things related to WordPress. It can be business, it can be opportunities for customers, it can also be some technical difficulties or other things. But you have a time constraint. Just like this talk, 10 minutes, a meeting has also a time constraint. But sometimes at the end of the meeting, there's a little bit of time left where you can squeeze in some analyzing of a website. How is it going to perform? But with the time constraint, we don't have time to use all the external tools to see how things are performing. Uh, so I use what's right at my end. It's the browser. It's the right click or the command I to see the dev tools. And mostly, I notice that a lot of people don't know what's all possible with those kind of tools. Don't rely on all those external tools, just keep it with the browser. So, why are we going to the dev tools? Tools are already there, you don't have to switch steps, you're faster, and when you have a time constraint of only 10 minutes like a talk, or only five minutes before next meeting, you can still do some analyzing without waiting for web page test or Google page speed to fully complete. Another big advantage is <coughs> that you have the knowledge of what's going on. It's not a big black box which, you're, which you are testing. If Google, well, probably they got good service, but you don't know exactly what kind of hardware they're running. Is their server busy? Or are you testing from North Carolina, a website located in London? Then you have the latency. So why don't we test right at the browser? Mind you, I'm not a developer, nor am I a designer, but since I work already three years for a web hosting company, I know a thing or two about speed. So that's what I wanted to focus on. How to access them? First of all, the slides will be shared directly uh, with Twitter after my talk, so you can put all the links and you can see it quickly. So let's dive into it. My first, most favorite tool is the network tools. You're gonna open the dev tools, gonna switch to network, and then we've got a whole bunch of information. Everybody can do it, but how to interpret it? That's the big issue. So when I see this, and probably a couple of people see already, like, what's going on? By the way, we're testing WordCamp and website now. <coughs> what does immediately fall to attention? See a couple of things. Let's zoom in. First of all, external domain. It stands out for me immediately, like, why does it load an external domain? We can see here that a Google APIs, a font library is downloaded, and it adds up another 500 milliseconds. And we see a little rainbow almost, like, what's going on there? Tip number one, hover over the little rainbow. See what's going on. There's always an explanation, if you don't immediately recognize something, what's going on. But you can see a new domain means another DNS lookup, another connection, an SSL handshake has to be performed, and it adds up half a second. Something just two clicks away, you already recognize there is some delay going on. Next, we saw a big red bar, 404. Not found. OK, OK, we can see that. It probably also throws some errors in the console. But what can we offer? What the DevTools offer us is immediately we can see where it is. Hovering is easy. <laughs> Clicking us up. Hover over it, we see exactly rule of line number 89. Or you can see, you can click it, and you will get right to the source code. 
no need to wait or to control F or command F, all the things. Not a thing. We saw an asset of 2.2 KB, and it takes almost one and a half seconds. We don't need Google PageSpeed to see that this is an issue. What do we see? We see that it's dynamic resizing in the name. It's all two clicks away, all these information. The server has to render a new image because we put some parameters in the URL. So, network tools. We still already more than three seconds delay. We don't need web page tests or Google PageSpeed to see those things. <coughs> Not a tip. Sort those columns you saw earlier. Which one, which S took the longest? Which are the biggest? How many 404s do you have? <laughs> Hopefully not. Now, some trivia tools that I just like to point out where people go like, Dev tools can do that? Yes. So you made a nice uh, tabular information about the schedule of your event, <coughs> and you want to share it. You can just select it in the source code, in the DevTools, it will highlight it, and then we have got a sub-tip, use the command menu. When we talk, just talk in shortcuts and not using your mice, you have only five minutes. I have only a couple of minutes left for this talk, so we have to be fast. Use command or control shift P. It shows up a control menu where you can just type in your command. And remember, we wanted to take a screenshot. Just type in screenshot. Let's see what Google Chrome has to offer us. Capture note screenshot, nice. We click it, it exports as a PNG. Server timing headers. We saw earlier, this is from the, the Google APIs fonts. We saw all these information. But the waiting, the time to first byte, is just waiting on the server to respond. What's going on? Well, we can do that. We can see how long the cache took, how long, how long total CPU time was. It's not easy, but for WordPress, it's easy. There's a plugin, of course. We've got Query Monitor. They're already forking their current plugin to include these kind of functionalities that you can just look or read out the information that Query Monitor has gathered from WordPress itself. And last, network throttling. Let's say you have an event and all the people are on the same Wi-Fi, but you can test the connection speed in beforehand because at home you have your fiber connection, nobody's watching Netflix, nobody's downloading anything, so you go like, yeah, my site is really fast. And then you go to the event and everybody's using the Wi-Fi and it's slow. How you, can you test in advance how your site will perform with a slow connection? So we throttle our network. First, we have one, oh, 11 Mbit per seconds. We make a network profile. We call it WordCamp Antwerp. Upload and download 100 KB. A little bit of latency. And suddenly we see, OK, it works. What does it mean for our site or for our event? <coughs> it takes three minutes. If you want to test it yourself, if you want to share other tips that I might not mention, please feel free to share them uh, with the hashtag WC Antwerp or ping me on the Twitter itself. Are there any questions? Whoa, exactly 10 minutes. I told you, I told you.